Allah Ta'ala. We praise Him and glorify His name, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We ask Him, Jalla Thana'uhu, to send peace and blessings and salutations upon the best of creation, our Sayyid, our Liege Lord, our Master, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and upon his blessed family, companions, folk, and followers in excellence until the end of time. That these are very heavy days, these are very heavy times. We are all <clears throat> overwhelmed with the tribulation, the extreme, unimaginable levels of violence, of cruelty, of barbarism, barbarism, barbaric, what many ge scholars of genocide have classified as a genocide that's unfolding right now in the Holy Land. And we know that our Prophet وسلم, foretold that this Ummah would experience tribulations and genocide and killing. In the hadith that Hakim relates in his Sahih, and the Habi confirms its authenticity that our Prophet said, وسلم, Ummati Hadihi, Ummatum Marhuma, this community of mine, this nation of mine is a nation, a community that has that receives a special grace, a special mercy. Its punishment is not in the next life. Its punishment is in this life. Az-zalazil wal-fitan wal-qatil. Earthquakes, tribulations that overwhelm, fitna. Al-fitan, wal-qatil, and to be victims of murder, of cruelty, of atrocities, of genocide, of all sorts of war crimes. This was foretold. And we, as a community, whenever we are confused, perplexed, overwhelmed, distraught, disconsolate, we go back to the Book of Allah Ta'ala. That is our first refuge. We go back to the Book of Allah, our scripture that was revealed to us. This sublime book, ذلك الكتاب, Alif Lamim, ذلك الكتاب, after the mysterious muqatta'at letters that open Baqarah, Alif Lamim, ذلك الكتاب, that is the book, that for something distant because it's so sublime. La Rai there's no doubt in this scripture. The words of Allah Ta'ala, Hudan lil muttaqeen, a great guidance for the people of piety, for the people of a moral compass, a moral compass for the people of God consciousness. Wanunazilu min al Qurani, ma huwa shifa'un wa rahmatul lil mu'mineen. And we have sent down from the book that which is a great healing, shifa, and a great mercy, rahma. For the believers. وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا But the book, what is the implication of the book for the tyrants? What is the implication of the book for the oppressors? What is the implication of the book for the war criminals and the war mongers? وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا It increases such people only in utter loss. Utter loss. Because they have to account. They have to answer to Allah. Everyone has to answer to Allah. No one will bypass the akhirah. No one will bypass the hisab. No one, no one will bypass the meeting face to face as it were, quote unquote. The direct encounter with Allah for the questioning and the accounting for every single act. Every life that is destroyed by a criminal. Every life that is destroyed by a warmonger. Every life that's destroyed by a cruel soldier, by a, by a soldier who presses a, a button and completely destroys an entire building with all of the precious lives, civilians, innocent civilians, men, women, and children in that billion, in that building, excuse me, that they have to answer to Allah Ta'ala. And our Prophet said in Sahih Muslim, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, اتقوا ظلم, beware of ever oppressing anyone. Beware of being oppressive. فَإِنَّ الظُّلْمُ ظُلُمَاتِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Because 
oppression and tyranny will be layers of darkness on the day of judgment. Vunumat, darknesses in the plural. That's what they will be enveloped by, the tyrants on that day, enveloped, enveloped by darknesses. shuh, and the Prophet continues, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and beware of stinginess, miserliness. فَإِنَّ شُحْ فَإِنَّ أَهْلَكَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ Because miserliness destroyed the peoples before you. It destroyed the peoples before you. حَمْلَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ سَفَكُوا دِمَاءَهُمْ It moved them, it incited them to spill blood. To spill blood. It's a tremendous thing. One life. To kill one life as, is as if to kill all of humanity. To spill the blood of one life. It's the weightiest thing. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ That shuh moved people. حَمَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ سَفَكُوا دِمَاءَهُمْ وَاسْتَحَلُّوا مَحَارِمَهُمْ And then to transgress every boundary. Every moral boundary. Every right of a human being. And reflect on this hadith because the two go together. These two diseases, tyranny and oppression, vuln and shuh, stinginess, miserliness. Because most wars and war crimes that unfold from wars, especially in modern warfare especially, that it's more often than not rooted in, in a type of shuh, a type of miserliness, a type of stinginess for power, the lust for power, the lust for dominion, to dominate over others, the lust for wealth. And we have an entire international monetary system, a corrupt international monetary system that facilitates most wars on earth today. So the two go together. That... Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. This is the, and Allah Ta'ala revealed, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا Bani Adam. This is our scripture. And this book that's a mercy, it's shifa'un wa rahma, a healing and a mercy. What part of that mercy is that it guarantees the sanctity of every human life? Reflect on that. When other ideologies have twisted, have such a twisted worldview that it's completely justified in these diseased minds and diseased hearts to destroy lives, to destroy the lives of civilians, non combatants, men, women, children in the thousands, to completely destroy their lives. And Allah protected this community from such injustice with the revelation amongst many others in the Qur'an and Sunnah, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have ennobled, we have honored every child of Adam, literally, Bani, every child of Adam. It's amazing. The gift of Islam. The gift of Islam. The gift of our Prophet وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except a, as a mercy to all Al-Alameen. To all humanity. Raghab al Isfahani in Mufridatul Quran, he says, Al Alam hu al insan. In classical Arabic, the primary meaning of Alam is Al Insan. So the primary meaning, Al Alameen, are Nas Jami'an. The Prophet was a mercy to all of humanity. So we have to turn back to Allah Ta'ala and we go back to the book and the sunnah and from the sunnah and from the book and the sunnah is to really supplicate to Allah. Don't underestimate dua. Don't ever, we can never, we can never underestimate dua. This is a trick of the devil. Allah Ta'ala has revealed, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord has proclaimed in His sublime glory and infinite wisdom, call on me and I shall answer you, guaranteed. And our Prophet وسلم, as is related in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, in an authentic hadith, that he told the Sahaba that there are mysterious ways in which Allah Ta'ala answers dua, but it's always answered. As he said, وسلم, ma min Muslim yad'u bi da'watin. There's never a single Muslim. There's never a Muslim that makes a supplication to Allah. 
So long as it does not entail any sinfulness or the breach of a family tie, a family bond, except that Allah will give for that supplication in response, astajiblakum, one of three things. Imma yu'ajillahu, that either, imma yu'ajillahu da'watu, that either Allah will immediately answer the supplication. Wa imma an yaddakhiraha lahu fil akhira, or the second possibility that Allah stores it for that person in the hereafter, in the akhira, the day of the hisab. Wa imma an yasrifa min as mithlaha. And the third option that Allah will ward off, will protect from some harm the like of that supplication. Qalu the Sahaba radiallahu anhum jamian. They said, Ithan nukthir ya Rasulullah. In that case, we're going to make a lot of du'a, plenty. We shall be plentiful in our supplication, O God's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa And how did he respond, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Qala, Allahu akthar. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah is more plentiful. Allah is more plentiful. Allah's mercy does not run out. Allah is not short. He's not in a want of mercy. He's not in a want of ability to respond. Allah has every single thing. Tabarak al-ladhi bi yadihi al-mulk. How exalted and blessed is the one in his very direct grasp, his omnipotent grasp, is the entire dominion, the east and the west, the north and the south, the holy land and every land on earth belongs to him. Jalla thana'uhu. Allahu akthar. This is what we have to do, is to make plentiful dua to Allah Ta'ala. It's a time of dua, of serious dua of turning back to Allah Ta'ala. Because with the dua is the tawbah to Allah, and the awbah to Allah, and the inaba to Allah. All of these levels of repentance in the Qur'an. To turn back to Allah from any sinfulness, that's tawbah. To turn back to Allah from any vices of the heart that pull us time and again to sinfulness, that's tawbah. And to turn back to forgetfulness, from Allah, to turn back to consciousness of Allah, that's inaba. Munibin, munibina ilay, the people who are in constant recognition and cognition of their Creator. Such people, their dua is mustajab. So we have to turn back to Allah in that way while we make this dua. And it's from the way of the early masters of our tradition to have such universal concern for the ummah and to make it a regular practice to pray for this ummah. That one of the early imams of our tradition, Ma'ruf al-Karhi, he was the sheikh of Sari al-Saqati, who was the sheikh of Imam Junaid, who by consensus of this ummah was an imam of this ummah, Imam al-Junaid, rahimahullah ta'ala, the sheikh of his sheikh, Ma'ruf al-Karhi, that he said, Man qala kulla yawm, ashra marrat, Allahumma aslih, ummata Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma farrij an ummati Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma marham ummata Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kutiba min al-abdal. That he said, whoever says ten times a day, O oh Allah, rectify the community of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make the community upright again. Remove the sinfulness. Remove any transgressions. Remove any dhulm from our ummah. Remove any shuh in our ummah. Wherever it may be, Ya Allah, rectify us, rectify me, rectify our families, rectify the ummah. Allahumma farrij an ummati Muhammad. Oh Allah, relief. Provide relief to the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. Relieve them from the tribulation that they, that's overwhelming. Allahumma arham ummati Oh Allah, have mercy on the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. And that this is a, that, that the result, he says that he shall be written amongst the abdal, this mysterious category of saints in our tradition that is translated as the substitutes. And one meaning of that is whenever one of them die, Allah substitutes with another of their like. And another explanation is that they are consciously working on substituting vices of the ego with virtues of the prophetic way. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfirullah. إن الله غفور رحيم
الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله تعالى ستيتس ان سوره صاد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا داوود انا جعلناك خليفه في الارض فاحكم بين الناس بالحق ولا تتبع الهوى فيضلك عن سبيل الله إن الذين يضلون عن سبيل الله لهم عذاب شديد بما نسوا يوم الحساب او ديفيد ريفلكت اون ذا كونتكست ريفلكت اون ذا كونتكست او ديفيد وي هاف ميد يو ا فايس جيرنت اون ايرث ا ريبريزنتيف اوف ذا بليجر اوف جاد اولمايتي ا ريبريزنتيف اوف ذا واي اوف ذا اوف ذا اوف ذا beautiful way of all prophets the moral a moral exemplar on earth fahkum bayna nas bil haqq so judge amongst humanity in truth truth and justice this is the way of prophet david this is the way of all prophets this is the way of our our beloved prophet sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was the reviver of the way of all prophets he completes it he is the mutammim in inna ma bu'ithu li utammima makarim al akhlaq i was sent only to complete and perfect good character wala tattabi al hawa and never follow pride lest it cause you to go astray from the path of god verily those who go astray from the path of god shall have a painful torment because of what they forgot they're forgetting the day of hisab وما خلقنا السماء والارض وما بينهما باطلا and we have not created the heavens and the earth and everything between them as batil this world is not made in vain this earth was not made in vain the heavens were not made in vain where where how can you know where where is the answer where is the moral response from the secular liberal world order where is the moral response from the atheistic world order from the civilization that claims to uphold human rights where is their response in these calamitous situations no all of these slogans are then bent and manipulated because the victims are dehumanized and demonized that's not our way allah has revealed a quran that establishes an objective moral order wa laqad karamna bani adam And so we believe the heavens and earth are replete with purpose and meaning. ذَلِكَ ظَنُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا To believe that this is all without meaning is the conjecture of disbelievers. فَوَيْلُ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنَ النَّارِ So woe to such disbelievers from the fire. أَمْ نَجْعَلُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَالْمُفْسِدِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Shall we treat those who are righteous, are believers, and work righteousness on earth like we do those who sow corruption on earth? who kill want wanton warmongers on earth are they the same shall we treat them the same do we think that the hereafter it will have the same outcomes for both categories is that even a is that any way possible am naj'al al-muttaqina kal fujjar or shall we treat the righteous like the sinful like the transgressors the genocidal maniacs kitabun a sublime book that's what we have that's the treasure that we have don't underestimate the treasure don't underestimate the gift of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kitabun anzalnahu ilayk that we reveal to you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mubarakun that's so full of blessing replete with blessing liyadabbaru ayatihi so that they might deeply contemplate and deliberate its signs and its meanings and its verses waliyatadhakkara ulu alalbab and so that the people of true intellect intellect of mind rooted in spiritual accomplishment virtue when the two are conjoined aql and qalb purified and oriented to what's right, to truth and justice so that such people ulu alalbab the people of lub the inner core liyatadhakkar that they might wake up that they might be people of consciousness of the divine and of the prophetic way and of the moral order and they do their best to establish that in their sphere of influence and we have to ask ourselves where is the quran in our lives where is the quran in our family life are we people 
يَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ Are we people who deeply contemplate? Do we study the Qur'an regularly? Is that part of our habit? Young people, are, 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 you, are you committed to studying the Qur'an? Ask yourself, this is not just for the elders. We need the young people to lead us sometimes. You should tell your parents, if it's not a, a staple in your house, I want to study the Qur'an, give me a good translation. Find me a teacher. Because when I look at the world, it breaks my heart. So I want to know what my Lord has told me. And I want to come to know my Prophet. So I can have some type of clarity in my heart. And I can be committed to doing something good with my life. And so that when I meet my Lord and I meet my Prophet I have a chance to be received with beauty and mercy and pride. That's what each and every one of us, especially the young people, should be saying right now. وَوَهَبْنَا لِدَاوُدْ Suleiman, And we gifted David, the one that was designated as Khalifa fil Ard, we gifted David Solomon. نِعْمَ abd. What a beautiful, what a great, what a supreme servant. إِنَّهُ awab. He was always turning back to Allah. He was a person of awbah. A person who consistent and constant in rectifying the heart so that he could be a moral exemplar to everyone he encounters. Muslim and non-Muslim. Muslim and non-Muslim. Are we ni'm al-abd? Are we striving? Are we aspiring to be ni'm al-abd? Someone that Allah boasts to his angels. What a great servant of mine. Are we aspiring to be people of awbah? إِنَّهُ awab. Sahil ibn Abdullah Tustari Radulana, another early master of our tradition, he said, Atoba to Tarku Taswif. He said, Repentance is to stop procrastinating. Repentance is to start now, today, this moment. We ask Allah Ta'ala for tawfiq. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make his people committed to guidance and truth and justice and moral clarity and the prophetic example of morality and the prophetic way in every aspect of our lives. We ask Allah Ta'ala to enable us to help the Ummah. We ask Allah Ta'ala to give us the ability to serve those who are victims of criminality. We are Allahumma aslih ummatu Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma farrij an ummati Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma raham ummatu Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma farrij an 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 muslimin fi 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 al ard al muqaddas fi filastin wa fi kulli makan ya arham ar rahimin. Ya Allah, Allahumma inna nasaruka tamam al afiya wa dawam al afiya wa shukra al afiya wa lghina anas. Allahumma restore aman and afiya in the holy land. Allahumma restore safety and security and peace and well being in the holy land. And all lands and all places, Ya Allah, where innocent people are being are being harmed and killed.